because I go through these thoughts all the time in relation to financial services or what you know what we should mm. give to people in Australia who want to borrow money. Mm. As a um, a senior influential person in the let's call it the catering industry, mm. catering and entertainment industry, what would you wish for Australia in the next ten years in terms of where you think? the vendors of catering and entertainment should be, which you're one of, mm, should mm. it be in terms of offering to customers and consumers like us? Where do you want us to go? Look, you know, it's a tough industry, you know, and you you know that because, you you know, I remember you came to me years ago with, with your son in the bar and whatever else. It just um, didn't fucking work out. No, we fail. <laughs> We're still paying it off. That's why I could never go on that Celebrity Apprentice because I, I couldn't – I could just never imagine you sacking me. I'd be like, <laughs> you can't sack me. I fucking helped you. Yeah, totally. 100%. <laughs> I think the government – um, should help us a little bit when it comes to things like FBT, you know, and and fringe benefits tax. And, yeah, for entertainment. And, and, and should and should abolish that because all yeah. that's going to do is create more jobs. Um, it'll it'll make the, the industry much more vibrant. When you say more fringe money. benefits tax, do you mean that the government should go back to allowing us to have a tax deduction for when we entertain our clients and business clients yeah. or whatever? And which, you know, we, we had around in the in the um, in the eighties. Oh, totally. And, and when they did it, I think they sort of stifled that lunch that lunch trade. hundred um, percent. But if they, you know, if they actually turn that around and even had a trial for a couple of years and, and saw how much more money they would make through having uh, people coming through the doors, spending more money in the economy and having more staff, um, you know, it would be a lot more vibrant um, because the, the margins are getting harder and harder to make, you know. And have you made submissions to government about this? Yeah, we have. Yeah, yeah. We've um, we've been really pushing through COVID. To you being we, of, who's we? So what's oh, your... As a body. Yep. Um, Is there a body? Yeah, well, there's uh, there is uh, um, there's there's a couple of them. There's uh, the hotels association, and there's also the restaurant catering yeah. association. So we're we've been trying to lobby that as much as we possibly can, and also um, payroll tax, you know, which is yeah, in the state tax, which is just yeah, well, you're getting charged for employing somebody, employing, which doesn't just doesn't make sense. And I, you know? have you made representations to Perite here in New South Wales? Uh, the restaurant catering have, yeah, yeah. numerous times. So we're, I- we're still waiting to see what's going to happen. Because I heard you on, uh, I might have been 2GB or Ben Ford, I'm talking about um, the, the COVID rules, relaxing the yep. rules more recently, yep. um, and that that, that, that that worked. I mean, you Look, it, it, it does in certain venues. Like we, if we go back with no job keeper at the end of March and, um, and no rent, you know, re- relief, um, our margin is going to be unbelievably hard to, to make and it will it'll send a lot of people broke. I'm not saying that I will, but, you know, we're a bit bigger and, and whatever else, but um, it will be so hard on some venues if they can't have 100% capacity of people in their venue. Um, they just won't survive. So, you know, either that has to be abolished social distancing completely or there has to be some sort of relief. Maybe not JobKeeper, but maybe FBT abolished, maybe payroll tax, you know, abolished for a period of time. Um, and just let us ease back into that. And would you be happy as a, as a as a just speaking on your own behalf, I guess here, if they said, okay, we'll, we'll get rid of FBT, but what we're going to do is we're going to um, increase GST to cover the gap. Because you know, like if you get rid of FBT and mm. payroll tax, the money's got to come from somewhere. Then I mean, that's the usual. Well, argument. I think FB, F, I think FBT, if you know, if they abolished it, I think it would create more jobs and more people going out. So then it would just raise more tax. It would raise more taxes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. maybe. No, that, I never, that, I never understood FBT, and I, I, I still don't. Not in restaurants anyway. Well, I, I always think it was it was it come around about the late eighties or something that when they it introduced was, yeah. it, and I, I, I remember it, and I remember. A, I think the reason they did it is because it looked like it was a, a rort that business people, you know, try salesmen or whatever, business people could get a tax deduction because they go to lunch. Mm. Whereas if I work in, uh, let's say, public service or I work in a bank, um, that um, I don't get a tax deduction when I go to my mm. lunch. Maybe the rules should be tightened up a little. Let's bit. tighten the rules up, mm. and let's make people. Or log it out like you do with your Absolutely. car. Absolutely, log yeah. these things out, and yeah. maybe they get um, something from the restaurant that says, "Yes, this was a business lunch." I yeah. don't know, but instead of just having a blanket rule saying, "No, you're going to have to pay an FB, a fringe benefits tax for those employees who ch- get get the tax deduction or get or get paid pay for their lunch," so of there being a, a fringe benefits tax, maybe instead of trying to just blanket us out with bombing. Uh, they they go along those lines and say no. What we'll do is we'll control it. You can have a tax deduction. Mm. There is mm. no FBT. You can have a tax deduction, but mm. these are the things you've got to comply with. I just think the government's got to stimulate, um, you know, our 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 industry 
you know, which will end up stimulating the economy in, in some way, shape or form. I just don't think if we just went back to normal, you know, there, there, won't, be, there won't be as many restaurants. But you don't want to come around Easter time watching restaurants fall over. You want to be able to help them get back on their feet and, yeah. and, and, and start making money and, and it obviously help our economy. Well, I think we all should. I mean, if I take my staff to lunch, I should be able to get a tax action for that. Mm. I mean, it, to me, it's I'm taking my lunch. I wouldn't ordinarily wouldn't take lunch, so, but mm. what, I shouldn't take have to take lunch and think well, I'm not going to get a tax deduction. So we're going to go somewhere cheap. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, uh, if or maybe another way of looking is I'll say I'll take them to I'll really spoil them because I know I'm going to get a tax deduction. It's only going to cost me half, mm. but it's still costing me. I still have to pay for it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I don't get it back to. It's not as if it's no. you know someone said it's fifty percent here, Mark. It's hundred percent. I pay. But down the track, I get a tax deduction for it, and so that that, and that gets reflected in the tax I might pay in twelve months' time. Or something. Yeah, of course, but like I would, I would just I'm money one who would, I would hundred percent. I would put more money back into that, yep. that system, uh, just as one person, because yep. how else can I reward my staff? Yeah, absolutely. There is nothing else. What no. am I going to do? Buy them a Christmas hamper? Like, I'm, yeah, I can get them a hamper. So what? I would rather when there's an impromptu moment, or a, and they're they're going they're all sitting here filming this, so they're going to actually quote me on this. But there's an impromptu <laughs> moment where you want to celebrate something that just happened. Yeah. You say, okay, let's all go to lunch. Yeah. Then you can. Yeah, bring just, or you go to Aria. There's chop house around the corner. Yeah. There's Chizik. mate, I can take Chiswick, wherever you want to. North for no fish. Let's go. <laughs> but I mean, I will, I will definitely do it because I mean, I'm only a survey one, but I think it makes sense. It sounds very logical to me, mm. and it's an easy one. It's an easy win. It is an easy because people are going to say, "Oh wow, how cool is that?" Yeah, everyone's yeah. going to say, and, and like it's about votes. That wins votes. Yeah, absolutely. Hope you really liked that episode. Make sure you like and subscribe, and there's even more coming every week. See you soon. Bye.